Thanks for tuning in to watch another one of my projects. For those of you who have uh, been keeping up with the channel, you know that I have not been. So this will be my first video uh, in 2018. And uh, it's indicative of the lack of time that I've spent in the shop. Uh, I do have four or five videos that are queued up and ready to go, but uh, we had some family emergencies this year and um, shop time just got prioritized to the back of the list. Um, but uh, I finally got some time to get into the shop and wanted to knock out a quick project just to get back on the horse, so to speak. And uh, we've been wanting to have a ruler that uh, we could track my daughter's growth with. And so this was a, uh, a great project or an, a great excuse to get back in the shop and a, an easy one to get uh, reacquainted with my tools. Um, this video or this uh, project is heavily influenced by April Wilkerson's uh, ruler video. So I want to make sure I give credit where credit is due. And thank you for that excellent video, April. And um, so what you see me doing here is my initial layout, putting a mark every inch, just so that I know exactly uh, where to, to route in uh, the later steps. And um, <clears throat> I went back and uh, really uh, uh, made a, a darker line uh, that it was uh, easier to follow. And once I did that, I was able to set up this jig um, that uh, basically gives me a stop. And I go through and I do all of one depth. I have three different depths on this ruler uh, for the markings. And uh, so this, this allowed me to do, and by depth I mean length of cut uh, in this orientation. And um, so I was able to, to utilize that uh, festival clamp there in the track as a, uh, as a stop. And um, I'd go through and do all of one length and then reset the stop, go through, do another, and then uh, rin rinse and repeat. And once I finished routing, the next step was to uh, go ahead and sand everything. You can see I've got a little bit of router burn in uh, some of those cuts, but uh, that wasn't a, a huge deal because we knew we would come back and uh, we would paint the recesses. Uh, I also found that uh, painter's tape works really well to hold down these router templates. Um, you, I guess if you're being really picky, it does create a small bit of variance uh, where um, the tape rests higher than the template and I guess theoretically your blade can show that difference. Uh, I never saw a difference and uh, we're really happy with the way this turned out and it prevented those uh, little uh, things from moving around as you were using them which did seem to be an issue. I also uh, added a second uh, template to the left side of each of these numbers for the uh, router base to reference off of and um, I felt like that gave me a, a much better um, kind of surface from which to uh, rest the router to keep it from t uh, tipping over. So I'll give you a little bit of a detail shot here of uh, what the operation looks like. It, it's not rocket science or anything. There's a, a bushing on the bottom of the um, router plate that rides within this template. And all you have to do is, uh, utilizing the, uh, the feel of the router in that template, uh, make sure that uh, you, know, you don't jump out of it or anything. But follow it along. I'd, I like to push one direction, so follow the right side and then follow back with the left side 
just to make sure that uh, if the bushing uh, isn't a great fit that uh, you, you don't end up with waves in those lines. Now my wife wanted me to do this by hand um, and uh, I, I really wanted to use the router because I knew it was going to be much faster but her, her biggest hang up was that she didn't like the way the four looked. And so the compromise that we came up with is that uh, if I went ahead and connected the four, um, that uh, she, she actually liked the way the numbers looked otherwise. So what you see me doing here is uh, referencing off the sides to make sure I, I get a nice straight line and uh, just removing the, uh, the excess uh, that uh, we didn't like that, that kind of ruined the aesthetic of this uh, four for us. Also, doing taking a little bit of extra time to try to mirror the bowl effect that the router bit gives. Um, this is not just a, a straight-sided router bit, and so um, I'm trying to use the chisel in a way that that mimics that same effect. One of the best aspects of this project, in my opinion, was that it was a collaborative effort. So it was a, an excuse to get my wife out in the shop and um, spend some time with her. And uh, I, Lord knows I certainly added uh, enough of these little lines that uh, she was able to spend quite a bit of time in there with me. So uh, this is a poplar board that I bought at uh, one of the big box stores and then I stained with special walnut stain from uh, uh, Minwax and uh, it, it looks nice in the room it certainly is uh, not what I would consider a walnut uh, a true walnut but hey you know for the couple of bucks that we spent in total for this project it was fantastic and uh, for those of you who are laughing at me for using a precision square uh, to put a vinyl decal in place it was a uh, used for reference uh, of what a straight line was. <laughs> And uh, one of the things, this, this font was fantastic uh, as looking. It, it was exactly what we were looking for. But having the, the small uh, details in it uh, did make it difficult pulling it off the, uh, the transfer piece. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it took quite a bit of effort and uh, going back and forth and fiddling to, to make sure that everything was well adhered and that we didn't just pull half the, the numbers and letters off as uh, we tried to unpeel it.
Jag tänkte resa. For those of you who are wondering, this is in 20 times speed right now. <laughs> so if it feels slow and painful for you, uh, it so most certainly was uh, a slow and tedious process for us <laughs> as well. Once we had the uh, decal in place, it was time to put a finish on, and uh, I, I owe a big thank you to Fuji. They, um, I, I was in the process of uh, painting some trim at a uh, project house, and someone uh, broke in and stole my uh, Mini Mike 3, and uh, when I called Fuji uh, to see if I could get the serial number from registration, which I had forgotten to do, um, they uh, they were so understanding, so helpful, did everything they could to help me out, and uh, shipped me this uh, Mini Mike Q5 Platinum, which which was an upgrade and an, and an additional expense on my behalf, but they just went way above and beyond in helping me out. And so uh, I'm going to make sure that uh, anytime I have a project that I use this, I, I highlight them and uh, say that they just have world-class customer service. So thank you again, Fuji. Uh, once I had all the finish wrapped up, it was time to put in the T-slots on the back. We want to make this so that uh, we can mark the, uh, you know, my daughter's height as she grows up. And so having the a easy way to hang this uh, direct to the wall and remove it um, repeatedly um, was, uh, was kind of key. And uh, we did not want to use a French cleat because we wanted this to sit right against the wall and the fl French cleat would uh, would push this off the wall just a little bit and so um, T-slots fit the bill and here I am hanging it utilizing the uh, the two T-slots in the back uh, I do find it really helpful to pick a reference item so I used my 36 inch straight rule um, to, to mark the spacing between the two T-slots and uh, then I can also use that to transfer the same holes to the wall and here's her ruler with some of her heights already. Thanks for watching.